Hey, hey, back to the map room. Been a while. Been a while, yeah. Okay, so today we're going to do a really quick video, a really quick recording session. We're just going to talk about the one quarter map I did for the ancestral clusters map. Mm -hmm. There's a migration map, human migration. Yeah, human species is like uh, very ancient. The time scale here is hundreds of years. Right, so the 200 on the map refers to 200,000. 200, so it's pretty cool because, um, I mean, obviously you're using the Altera base map here mm -hmm. that you've reprojected nicely. Yeah, but that, that you've the, reprojected for me. Yeah, <laughs> but the content of the map actually is uh, very accurate, is, uh, is real world yeah. information that you're displaying. Minus one little bit there. Yeah. Which would be that migration from Madagascar to Siluria, uh, to Siluria which, yeah. which you it's brought out of the oceans. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's just to show, um, uh, because no one actually lives there, I do that to show just like the amazing feat of like Austronesian like, uh, navigation, mm -hmm. but then to also have another learning lesson of human uh, caused extinction events. So, um, spoiler alert, the indigenous peoples of Solaria get treated kind of like the way people in Newfoundland did. So they're isolated and quickly die out uh, because there's no because there's no real world culture that could be plugged in there that I could, you know, figure out, you know, to be like unique. So I was like, okay, this is just a good learning lesson. And then I'm going to, in other places of the world, lessen those real world atrocities or kind of like um, really really drastic decimation events, literally decimation, right? Like reduced to 10 mm -hmm. power 10. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So um, if you take a, a step back there. So what do the, first of all, what do the colors represent? Okay. So, uh, well, there's like two things. So colors are in two categories. There's the blues and then the like uh, purplish reds that shows like within Africa and out of Africa, out of Africa is a pivotal event. Uh, because it, it marks like humans really spreading across the world, but it actually shows the least genetic um, differences, actually, like or the time skill is way less. And um, so those three, like the blues actually should each be a different color. But here it's more it's kind of like, you know, when you have a Sprox blend uh, for languages, it's like by association. They're all associated in the sense that they're all at, within Africa. Um, and you can see the without of Africa arrow, that one arrow is a bit of a closer color to the purples. And then you'll see that they start diverging. Mm. And the different colors outside of Africa signify the different kind of founder effect migration routes that people um, in the literature hypothesize. The one that's most studied is the Southern hypothesis, the Southern route one, which is the one where humans quickly made it to Tasmania or Australia, all the way to the bottom you know, of the world, basically. Uh, in like right after leaving Africa, and that's a huge curiosity. But um, the the route that they take is this hypothesis. Like this, this is pretty conservative. This is kind of like what the, all the literature shows. One problem is that we're not sure. Like the evidence that we have for India, like locations of artifacts in India, are just as old as the newest findings in Australia, which shows that either people migrated to India a lot sooner. And then kind of stayed there a while and then migrated to Australia or one group s stayed in India and another group quickly, like like within like less than thousands of years, made it to Australia. So that's why I have these two arrows still combined and they're both at the 60,000 mark. Mm -hmm. Which is what you did also with those red lines uh, in Siberia. Exactly. Well, wait, just before we talk about that, yeah. uh, um, what does the width of the, light, uh, so, of the line represent? So the thickness, the thick lines are like the main kind of founder effect uh, lines, which is to say um, these uh, primary migrations uh, led to kind of isolated human populations that would later on, uh, they're not bottlenecks the way that we have like the San people or like the Khoisan in the south. Uh, this refers to um, uh, like a pivotal um, band of people moving and getting isolated and then forming a major genetic uh, block that would later um be distinct and so you can see that those thick arrows in purple are my only way of explaining how if you arbitrarily divide by divided the human race into like 10 or 15 groups the majority of those groups would actually happen in oceania and that's because the early migrations out of africa um saw a lot of straggling bands get separated 
right? So they are genetically actually some of the most distinct peoples, even though we all see them as like just like one skin toned people, you know, black skinned people of Oceania, except they're actually super diver uh, diverse. Uh, whereas like the ones that cover the most territory have the most genetic similarities. Um, and that would be this northern route. And um, I did a, I did a liberal estimate here. instead of the conservative one in mm -hmm. Africa. We'll talk. Yeah, right. Because uh, 200,000 uh, years ago is quite conservative today. Yeah. I mean, most of the graphic uh, content I found, like, for, first of all, I couldn't find any kind of maps that did justice to this kind of research. They were all focused on one thing or another mm -hmm. or just did it really badly. They, like the founder effect where the that thick line stuff, they kind of just pay homage to uh, with like um, an arbitrarily drawn thick lines mm -hmm. that don't really correspond to any data. So like, yeah. well, I think this map uh, should change that. Yeah, exactly. But but yeah, so you were saying there's an older finding in Morocco. Yeah, right? well, or, yeah I mean, there's there's finds in Morocco uh, and now they're finding in Kenya and Tanzania. Even older. Even right? older, right? And you so. can actually notice that if we go to the, from the very beginning, actually, before we talk about Siberia, sorry. Um, in Africa, um, recent studies um, have shown that South Africa might be the point of origin, but it's also been controversial. The South African study shows that uh, the oldest, um, like genetic, like is it called haplogroup, like genetic like human Eve? You know what's what's that thing they call mm -hmm. um, ancestral Eve? Like the oldest one that you can trace back mm -hmm. to, the oldest woman is was from South Africa, like near Zambia, mm -hmm. okay, near the swampy areas just north of the of the Kalahari Desert. But it's been criticized, so it's not been fully accepted. Anyway, so the point is, um, there I was conservative. But then in Siberia, I chose to take the 30,000 estimate, the long, the long year count. Um, because currently in academia, they still believe that humans inhabited the Americas. They got to the Americas about 12,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago. Um, and that main one you can see on the right of the Rocky Mountains, on the west, on the east of the Rocky Mountains, is the kind of glacial narrative, the glacial migration one, right? Where they said, okay, about 10,000 years ago, that route opened up and it became biogeographically available, as in people could actually hunt and eat stuff there. Beforehand, it was all glaciers, and they're like, how could people survive there anyway? Um, so now we have older artifacts found all throughout the Americas, in South America, near Chile as well, that's beyond 15,000 years ago, 20-something thousand years ago. And so that means the coastal migration route, which we have no evidence for, um, but it, it's likely, it's very likely. So that's why I have this 30,000 um, mm -hmm. arrow. And you can see that it's connected to the other 30,000 arrow that ends in Eastern Siberia. And, and that's the one that we have the most evidence for, that people were hanging out in Eastern Siberia in Beringia for 30,000 years, and that they were slowly trickling their way, their way through the Bering Strait area, which would have been filled, it would have been above sea level. And then they would have made it down the glacier path when it became biogeographically available. That's the conservative one. But we can see a split here. Um, mm. And then there's another cool thing here, the 20,000 year mark above the Amur River, the Amur Delta area. That is just to pay homage or like to refer to the Yenese connection, which is that uh, the 10,000 year mark probably doesn't, um, explain for the Yenese and Nadene or Athabascan and Navajo language connection. The Yenese migrated all the way to Lake Baikal, but they're also related to the Nivik, uh, which are now posited to be related to the Salishan languages and the Wakasan languages, but they're also related to Ainu and the people of, you know, Tungusic people like Manchurians. Mm -hmm. But this little thing is just like that little arrow that doesn't have a time thing at the end of it. It's just to say that somehow, at some point, they got into these uh, migrations. Mm. Um, and you can see uh, the Western route one is the European one. And that one actually doesn't, like, even though those arrows look like they correspond to the early uh, hunter-gatherers of Europe migrating and then being replaced by the Indo-Aryan farmers, or Indo-Aryan steppe people, and also the farmers that come through Anatolia, it actually doesn't correspond in time scale because that happened all within 10,000 years. This is a 30,000 year thing. So this doesn't really correspond to what we kind of know as like, you know, recent human history or even prehistory. This is like way, way more ancient. This is like Ice mm -hmm. Age stuff. For example, in the high Arctic, those, the five and the four, and the one, they're not a linear. Like the Inuit did not make it to the Northern Arctic 5,000 years ago. They did all of that migration in 1,000 years ago. So that last thing, that last one, shows their entire sweeping migration out of Western Alaska. 
But the five and four show extinct peoples that are called Paleo Eskimos, uh, which are related to the Inuit, thought to be related to them, and probably originated in Western Alaska as well. But they actually went extinct. So the Inuit replaced them completely. The most famous of these peoples are the Dorset culture. But so that's that's one bringing it up because in Europe those like thirty thousand stuff they don't correspond to the hunter gatherer then farmers from the Middle East, then the Indo-Aryan people taking over all of Europe. That's Here. way more recent. Yeah. It represents the first populations yeah. in that area. Exactly. So we don't even mm. know what, you know, all, obviously like culture and stuff is completely different. So, mm. but this does help us understand um, genetic diverse, diversity that we inherit in human admixtures. So um, quick side note, um, that line there that's going, um, from uh, like the Great Lakes uh, to um, modern day Newfoundland. Okay, yeah. Doesn't you don't have like a date at the end of that? Yeah, it might bring to confusion just the point where you have those Norse coming in a thousand years ago. Yeah, in an area which doesn't have a date. Oh, to show that the Norse beat them to it. Yeah, it might. Okay, yeah. Bring that interpretation to it. You okay. know what I mean? That's true. That's true. Um, yeah. That's the soul, soul and that's like soul, soul truen or. You know that hypothesis? I don't even know that was a hypothesis. Soul and true. Actually, like for the la- for recent really? history, a lot of people when they portray these maps, they show that soul and tru- tru- so truly in so truly in peoples. Uh, it's the hypothesis that the eastern peoples of uh, of the Americas, the indigenous people, are said to be descended of Europeans, but like Paleo Europeans, um, and that they were able to migrate along the glacier that kind of formed mm. across the Arctic. But it's been largely proven false. It's just that some of the um, um, bifaces, the very ancient kind of like um, rocks that had split to be used for cutting tools, um, they found similarities between Eastern America and Western Europe. Mm-hmm. Just found, but that could be coincidence. And yeah, it's quite interesting because uh, you also see the most recent areas of the world which humans populated last. Yeah. Which would be like the Easter Islands and Polynesia, Polynesia, yeah. Hawaii, Hawaii, uh, uh, New Zealand, Madagascar too. Madagascar was like avoided for so long, and just as the Malagasy, the Austronesians arrived in Madagascar, right. so what the is, Bantu arrived there too. Yeah. So what is the time frame for for the Austronesian migrations? This is a problem. The thirty thousand year migration is not the same as the Austronesian migration because mm-hmm. the Austronesians that went to Taiwan would have been farming already. So they learned how to farm in the Yangtze Delta. So they replaced the original hunter-gatherers that went to Taiwan. But anyways, the interesting thing is the Austronesian migration out, you can see is the five. So in Luzon, they, you know, in the Philippines, mm. they come out 5,000 years ago. Within 4,000 4, years ago, they've dominated all of Indonesia. By 2,000 years, they somehow drift to you know, Madagascar. And they get on both sides. Yeah, and 2,000 years on the opposite side, they end up in the Solomon Islands, Vanuatu and stuff. And they leave their language, but little, and some genetic contribution, but they don't replace. Whereas in Indonesia, they mostly replace. It's, it's, it's very curious. Like, uh, mm. in the Philippines, central Malay Peninsula and parts of Borneo, where you find high genetic markers of the peoples you call Negritos, which would be the this purple migration thing. Like the you see the 50,000 mark here. Those would have been the indigenous people that kind of split off and they're related to Andaman Islands, which is like that marker is quite faint compared to like Eastern Indonesia, which had a lot of like Papuan admixture. Mm-hmm. So would you say that's the area in Indonesia where you have the most replacement? Most replacement, it, it seems. It's, it's it seems, yeah. Here's an, actually another cool thing. Something that is not explained. The current uh, theory of Australia's population, the current hypothesis in Australia was was populated just once, okay? One straggling group made it Australia and populated the entire continent. But on the fringe, there are other studies showing two things that kind of challenge the idea. One is that dingoes made it 10,000 years ago. And the dingoes that made it there were domesticated dogs from Eastern Asia. So they could have come with other like, um, um, you know, po- like related groups, like from, you know, maybe Philippines, same, like similar kinds of people. Um, but still, they were already domesticated. They went feral once they arrived in Australia. So it could be that the people that came there didn't even leave any genetic contribution because you don't really see any of that in the population. But the dogs got off the boat. The dogs 
you know, could breed, right? The right. Other, so there might have been contact, but yeah, not like not a significant sustained. like genetic contribution. Exactly. But it, it could have been too, because there's not a lot of genetic studies in Australia. Right, because right here you have five and eight. Yeah. It was like 5,000 and 8,000 years ago, well, you'd have potential... Two, two introductions. Uh, yeah. Two introductions, The age yeah. is the dingo, because they think that right. the dingo went on the eastern route. But here's the cool thing. There's another person who's trying to explain the dingoes with something else, genetic markers. In Northwest Australia, there are Indian genetic markers, but not from the Indian contact period of the Chola, let's say, like, you know, when Indians were maritime, but in, in like ancient history, about 5,000 years ago. So about 5,000 years ago, somehow Indian, like not even like Malays, but like Indians from India, like Dravidia, like, you know, Tamils, somehow got to Australia. Now, this person, who, this uh, scholar who found this genetic marker stuff, um, they, they did it, you know, the, the genetic studies, just like any other studies, like they were able to match findings with like comparing the Australian Aboriginals with the people of Papua and stuff. So they were able to, their, their sample was good, but they just couldn't account for the Indian one. And so their hypothesis is that, and they tried to also say maybe these people brought the dingoes, but the dingoes arrived in Australia far older Mm. Then the genetic markers contribute. Like these genetic mar- markers suggest only 150 generations ago, but dingoes are far older. Anyway, so that's one mm-hmm. cool thing that I added. But this is, again, this is not Altera lore. This is real world stuff. Yeah. So I guess a migration pattern which would be more Altera yeah. specific would be like that um, the one on the on the western side of your like Black Sea, the 40,000, okay. 10,000, yeah. 10,000. Actually, no, that's, that's true. That's, that's true too. So like all of the Arctic, you know, like, you know, because the Black Sea is just filling in Siberian land, like all of that is land accessible. So, oh, cool. yeah. So, um, well, I guess the only difference is that little line at the bottom of my yeah, and, yeah. And then I, I purposely showed that one little line to Mammoth Island or, uh, yeah. or, uh, what's it called? Wrangell Island just to show, I mean, humans did make it there and they actually probably hunted the mammoth to extinction there, but that's just to show that they, mm-hmm. uh, yeah yeah the domesticated mammoth <laughs> yeah i guess like what uh what is just like a little striking yeah. to me is the north africa is quite young compared to um like uh you mean 30, saharan yeah like thirty thousand and ten thousand years yeah it is seem like very recent compared to the very old surrounding that's just i i didn't do any critical yeah. because that's warfare. the thing like this field yeah. of uh like paleo history it's so marked of gaps is, it's there's so many gaps and yeah. just one new discovery can change the whole narrative. Yeah, one one little biphase. And I think really interesting. Yeah. Because there's so much volatility of it. Yeah. Um, just pulled up this uh, article from Nature. <laughs> yeah. Which uh, which is called "Oldest Homo Sapiens uh, Fossil Claim Rewrites Our Species History." Okay. Remains from Morocco dated to three hundred and fifteen thousand years ago. Huh. Push back our species origin by a hundred thousand, and suggests we didn't evolve only in East Africa. And it is, yeah, Homo sapiens. But the 10,000 year mark you see in the Sahara there, that's when the Sahara was green or just closing off too. Mm-hmm. And so could it have been, because, you know, it oscillates. Could it have been that 30,000 years ago, there was a desert again? So it was desert, then green, then desert, right? So like that 100 year migration, the Nile, like why did it get blocked off, right? Maybe they met desert. So I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. That's something I, I, I uncritically just copied. Whereas the other areas where I found gaps, I did extra research yeah. for. And again, the thing with this is not only 1% of, of artifacts like or of human bones are even preserved in fossils. Yeah. So it would be totally logical that populations will go into, you know, uh, modern day Palestine area. Yeah. Uh, from from Egypt. Yeah, we just haven't and we just have no yeah. clue of it. Yeah. yeah. So we can only find stuff which has preserved. And yeah. The, the coolest thing would be the tropics, right? Like mm-hmm. figuring out a way to really find stuff in the Amazon. Like exactly. For because preservation history, is even yeah. less. For recent yeah. history, but also ancient history. Yeah. It'd be incredible to find archaeological rem- remains, yeah. um, you know, in those incredible cities that were built in the middle of yeah. the Amazon. And then, you know, yeah, regrown. 500 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Uh, that's a quick one. Yeah. That's a quick one. All right. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Okay. (laughs)